My very special guest today is Susan Ariel Rainbow Kennedy, also known around the world as Sark. She is a best-selling author and artist with more than 15 titles and over 2 million books sold. Some of her bestsellers include Succulent Wild Woman, Bodacious Book of Succulents, Eat Mangoes Naked, Prosperity Pie, and Fabulous Friendship Festival. Her work is widely used by universities as required reading and course material. And she is a distinguished contributor to many magazines and periodicals. For over 20 years, Sark has led workshops to inspire people in living more powerfully and authentically and being more actively creative on a daily basis. So, should I call you Sark or Susan? You can call me Sark. Oh, I can call you Sark. Yes. I was totally surprised by that. <laughs> I thought you were going to say I call you Susan. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic, because since I've been speaking to you as Susan, now I'll call you Sark. Okay, good, awesome. Um, you have been described as rainbows and unicorns and groundedness and funniness and love and sacred spirit and sensuality and sass and womanhood and friend all in one. How do you describe yourself? <laughs> wow. A succulent wild woman. Oh, yes. okay. Yes, rare, original, eccentric, deep, rich, wide, rare, I already said that, female. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. That's wonderful. So why, why do you think it's important to follow our creative dreams? <gasps> There's nothing more important. There's nothing more important because it's the, it's the wellspring of everything. And the wonderful news is creative dreams are incredibly resilient. They will wait for you your entire life. People get afraid that it's too late or they've lost out or they've missed out and they don't understand that creative dreams will literally wait. And when you say creative dreams, you mean creative dreams at, you know, manifesting as something you do in your life. Yes. 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 So it's taking that and making it who you are. Yes. And a lot of people have creative dreams early in life, as I did. Mm. And then sometimes there'll be years before it manifests physically in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's the period of time that people begin to doubt. Right, that's when you lose yourself. So how do you think that creati creativity can heal your life? Well, and it, it, it's more than that too. It's creative creativity and it's creative thinking mm -hmm. and it's creative application. And it's people having awareness that they already are creative. They don't need right. to go to a right. class. They don't need to learn to be creative. Every parent is the most one of the most creative people we have on the planet. Mm. If you spend the day with a two-year-old and you're not creative. <laughs> right, true. <laughs> So I'm, I've heard that you advise people to do things badly. Isn't that kind of counterintuitive? Well, most of the best stuff is counterintuitive. So that's number one. Number two, yeah. yes, I had a fabulous mentor. Um, she wrote a book called You're Not Old Until You're 90. Best to be prepared, however. <laughs> and she said to me, oh, Sark, when you talk to groups of people, would you please tell them that if they meditate and do it badly, it still works? Oh. And then she said, I see what you mean. That's fantastic. Yeah. And she said, oh, and that goes for everything else, too. Yeah. So I have been avidly practicing doing things badly. Right. And I'm so happy to say that no one notices. <laughs> well, it also takes the pressure off, right? It takes that, that idea that perfection is what we're, you know, and what does that mean anyway? And what is doing it right? Oh, so, yes. You know? Well, if you grew up with a perfectionist mother, as I did, mm. you know, and you, you too? as many did. <laughs> And she did too. Yeah. As you, you know, I remember sitting in therapy one time and my therapist said, well, tell me about the rules in your family. And I said, really? I said, okay, we'll start with the vacuum cleaner. And I listed <laughs> like 50 rules with the vacuum cleaner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had the same mom. <laughs> <laughs> vacuum cleaner rules too. So uh, kind of switching, well, not really switching, but how do you define spirituality? Mm, spirituality is... Mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's something, I think it's something intrinsic. It's something of nature. It's something that humans can embody. I, I'm not sure what it is. I mean, I'm not sure what the exact definition would be. I'm, I like that. I'm a spiritualist. I'm a humanist spiritualist. What would you say to somebody who doesn't feel as though they're a humanist or a spiritualist? I would advise them to go to bed. <laughs> Knock yourself out. I like that. Go to bed. Start over tomorrow. That's good. I don't no, know. I don't think that's what you meant, but I like that struck me. Well, I'm a big I'm a big proponent of people resting more. 
There's a lot of crabby, I absolutely agree. crabby, overtired no, people. No, it's, it's very, very true. I think people don't get enough rest. I think that's that's very wise. So um, you have said that we're good enough already, and uh, without one single bit of improvement, yeah. we're already okay. Well, we're already okay. Or you could take what Elizabeth Kubler-Ross said, which I also love, you're not okay, and I'm not okay, and that's okay. Cool. So this whole okayness and this whole quest for perfectionism is really does stem from a sense of unworthiness. Yeah. And we are worthy as is. Yeah. As is. I love that. And good enough. Yeah. I, I met a man yeah. recently in an elevator, and I said to him, wow, you have the best energy. And he said, thank you. I'm so in love with myself. Wow. And I was literally like, can he Taking say that? Back. Yeah, right. And then I thought, why can't I say that? Right. And so I started really avidly studying self-love. Yeah. And knowing that we're all taught to love ourselves, but we're never supposed to talk about it. Yeah. Because if you talk about well, it... we think of it as arrogance. We think but of it it's as not, narcissism. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it has nothing to do with ego. I mean, actual self-love is really just a pure state of, of acceptance. Well, that yes. And so I, I really became what I call a full cup of self-love, mm -hmm. ready to share the overflow. Nice. Instead of how I had been living, which was like a half-empty cup. Right. Searching around for something to fill mm -hmm. that half-emptiness. Half and so now I really say to people when they say, how are you, depending on who they are and what the circumstances, I will say, I am so in love with myself. That's great. Yeah, I invite you to try it. Okay, I'm done. I'm doing. I am. I'm in love with myself. Anyway, I'm living that long. <laughs> what is one practice that, you could, that, that we could all do every day to move from self-criticism to self-love? Well, one of the simplest ways to, to ground it in the physical body is to wake up and hug yourself. And it seems funny and it feels a little embarrassing and odd, and, but I'll tell you if you do it and practice it. I mean, mine is now into five and 10 minutes of rolling around, kissing my shoulders, saying terms of endearment. By the time I get out of bed, all my endorphins are, have risen. I feel like 10 good friends have hugged me and I am that full cup of self-love ready to share the overflow. What does spiritual film mean to you? And can, can you tell me some of the, the films that have you know, been, been your favorite films of transformation? Oh, I'm a, I'm a transformation nut. I mean, I really am. And I realize that all the films that are my favorites are just major transformational vehicles. And that's what, that's what spiritual film means to me. Right. And so probably on my all-time favorite movie is Resurrection with Ellen nice. Burstyn. Yes, beautiful oh. film. Yes. Yes, and then Enchanted April. Yes. Joan Plowright. Oh, yeah. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. That's great. And then uh, Auntie Mame with Rosalind Russell. Wow, wonderful selection. That's great. Do you see films as a, as a way, you know, as an opportunity for social connection? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think people share their vision through films with mm -hmm. each other. I mean, people say you can see so much about someone from their movie choices yeah. and what they say about the movie. Yeah. And then they have conversations with other people that, uh -huh. you know, and then they, they get in, they, you can get into a spiritual dialogue. Absolutely. So who, who do you watch films with and, and where? I usually watch films alone. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I am so scooped into the mystery and magic and spirituality of the film that I can't necessarily share it. Right, right, right. And it kind of takes up, and I'm one of the people that that film, those people lived in that film. So right. someone will say, did you see what Joan Plowright did? And I'm like, no, she was in Enchanted April. <laughs> like, she was. That's yeah. who she was in that movie with that cane. And, yeah. and, you know, yeah. and of course I've seen her in other things, but yeah. then I have to refer to that. Like, yeah. she lives inside of that film. Oh, that's beautiful. Hey, you're a great audience. <laughs> I'm going to send you all my movies. <laughs> um, so if money, talent, and, 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 you know, and time were absolutely no obstacle, what kind of film would you make? <gasps> oh, wow. That's a great <laughs> question. I would make a film about creative dreams and mm. the miracles that I have witnessed and oh. seen people manifest. Yes. That's great. So... Um, what what are you what about the future are you inspired by or optimistic? Oh, everything. This That's is the good. most exciting time we have ever lived, and I've waited my whole life for it. Oh, I like that. Yes, it's a great dismantling of what has not served us, mm -hmm. and it's That's a absolutely right. it's a great regeneration of what will serve us so much better yeah. and longer and richer. What doesn't work is falling away. Yeah. 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 
Well, it looks like we're out of time, but you're you're delightful. Thank you so much. Oh, you're much. delightful. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for my card, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. She gave me a card. <laughs>